probiotics, microbiomes, prebiotics. These are terms that we now see in the media by your doctor, by your healthcare provider, and by your cousins and by your neighbors. And we talk about it in family reunions. I'm Dr. Rafai, I'm the virtual nephrologist. I'm a practicing nephrologist in Florida in the United States. And I'm gonna take this opportunity to explain and simplify these terms for you. Number one, probiotics. Probiotics is a description of a good bacteria that lives within our intestines and they love to live there and they love to turn the inside of the intestines and us into healthier existence and feel better. The term microbiomes describes exactly the environment and what bacteria and what fungi and what spores and what other viruses live within our intestines. Prebiotic is a term that describes the food that the probiotics or the good bacteria eat. So the question is, why is this coming to surface? We know today that in addition to conventional medications and conventional therapy, there is plenty of positive roles of those bacteria. They like to live within your intestines. They like to reflect health upon you because that means it's health for them. We know today there is a communication and the most important thing is the health of the GI tract. If you have problems with constipation, bloating, discomfort, distended, gas, whatever you have, probiotics and the health of probiotics are very well known to regulate all this. The other issue that they have a positive influence is cardiovascular health and blood pressure health. We know today that blood pressure will be easier regulated when the probiotics in the intestines are healthier. They also regulate your immunity. The past four years with COVID, patients who did have, or individuals, they may not be patients who had a healthier intestinal probiotics, had lesser and a lighter course of their COVID disease, and that has been very well documented. We know today there's a lot of autoimmune disorders that are the result of bad probiotics and the bad microbiomes. Rheumatoid arthritis, psoriasis, eczema, itching, rashes, multiple sclerosis, all these diseases that are immune dysregulation mediated, those diseases will get better when the probiotics and the microbiome get healthier. There is also a close relationship with insulin resistance and uh, diabetes and prediabetes. We know today very well that patients who had healthier probiotics, a healthier microbiomes will do a lot better. And we don't know if the deficiency in the probiotics leads to worse diabetes or vice versa. Last but not least, which is my specialty, which is kidney disease. There is an access between the kidneys and the microbiomes and the healthy probiotics and the health of the kidney is also reflected on this. If you're depressed, probiotics also will help you with produce a little bit of precursor of serotonin, which is a good hormone for mental health. What can we do to improve our probiotic profile and improve the microbiomes? We need to get more probiotics into our intestines. So the way we do it is first we feed the good ones this is where the term prebiotics comes up, which is undigested fibers that we cannot digest. Those bacteria love that food. There's plenty of plants that have undigested fibers like inulin or pectin, and there's other as well. But the prebiotics will feed the probiotics and you'll have a better profile. Let's invite the good guys that comes from different diets. They come from, for example, sauerkraut. They come from uh, kimchi. They could come from kombucha, apple cider vinegar, and mainly the most important thing is they come from yogurt that still has live bacteria in it that has lactobacillus, which is known to be the best probiotic ever. Last but not least, let's not feed the bad bacteria. The bad biotics or the bad bacteria in the intestines love to eat junk food, chips, hydrogenated oils, high sugars, refined sugars, fats, and so forth. So let's not feed them and let's suffocate them and let's starve them so the good bacteria, the good probiotics will grow.
Now, if you take antibiotics, you will also destroy the health of your intestines for at least a year before it comes back to normalcy. After this and after what you heard, so I encourage you to eat the good stuff. I encourage you to eat fibers. I encourage you to consume a lot of foods that are rich in probiotics. But here is, if you're gonna to go to the pharmacy and buy a brand, here is what you need to do. First thing, what you need to do is you need to take capsules that have at least 10 different strains of probiotics. And you also need to take at least 10 billion colony forming units. So when you take this, you are taking the best probiotics possible, combine it with the prebiotics, stop taking antibiotics and stop feeding the bad bacteria you will turn your intestines into a factory that produce a lot of healthy hormones, healthy material, and will make sure that you stay healthy altogether. With this, I hope I made it simple. I hope I made it practical. And I hope that you know now, if you go to the store, what to buy and what to eat. I'm Dr. Rafai, the virtual nephrologist. Stay healthy and stay safe.